Hey Builder Blog! So today we're taking a break from Scorpios and we're visiting another team's shop that is going to be joining the the crew at Fall Face Offs. Can you guess who? <laughs> so Jen, what makes you build BattleBots? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, by which I mean the East Coast of the United States, where we are not currently, um, I used to build small robots and like hack up RC and cars and trucks. And it was just something for fun, for funsies. In 2018, I got the opportunity to build a heavyweight robot for the first time. And I had already been building power racing series cars. So small electric vehicles that we'd race around small tracks at Maker Faire. And the overlap, like the Venn diagram of people who build power racing cars and people who build battle bots, like that, it gets like real circular after a while. <laughs> and so building robots was another very enjoyable, very technically difficult, very challenging way to spend time with my friends and people that I like and respect. And uh, it has grown from there. So it's gone from like something that I've done as a hobby for fun to like something I take very seriously and put a lot of time and money into. Little tricks. I am, I'm pretty excited about the lineup that we have this fall. Uh, it's Switchback, Bloodsport, and Terror Tops. Now Terror Tops we have not fought before, but Switchback and Bloodsport we have fought. Uh, the wonderful thing about Bloodsport, we had a very explosive high energy fight with them. And at the end of that fight, they won by, by fractions. The chassis they used in that fight, we did so much damage to it from side impacts from our weapon, they had to retire the chassis but they got the win. With Switchback, oh lordy, the moment that it was announced that Hijinx would be fighting Switchback, Greg, Rev Robotics Needell, was in my DMs with the taunts. That man, he's, uh, he's already called it out. We had a hardware failure that just, in my, in my opinion, almost ruined the fight because we didn't get to see the robot behave correctly. What we saw was something break that was never meant to be on the robot in the first place. So the first thing Greg says is, do me a favor and go shopping at Charles Garage again. <laughs> I just want to point out that, you know, it's my turn to win. Don't like, don't worry, Greg, if you're seeing this, I'll have a wonderful gift to share with you after I win. <laughs> uh, Terror Tops is kind of the, the more unknown of the group, at least for us. No, the team I like. I think they're adorable, and we've interacted in a casual way at like Robo Games. They seem lovely, so I think being in the pits with them is going to be fun. But they do have like a combination lifter vertical spinner, and that is interesting because if you get a lifter in under like under our weapon, if they can get that close without taking damage, uh, they could control the fight. So we're going to have to think really critically about how we handle the lifter spinner. Uh, it kind of takes us back to the Whiplash days, and we had a wonderful fight with Whiplash at the end of Season 6. We went three minutes in the fight, and it was a very fun fight to watch, at, at least from my perspective. We did not get the judge's decision. It went to Whiplash, and I think that's fair. But, like, once again, we have to worry about what they can do to control us or shut down our weapon or get, like, smother us and prevent us from being able to do stuff, because this is kind of a big weapon on wheels. And uh, if you can't get the weapon spun up fast, there's, there's not much you can do. Are we... <laughs> Funny story. So this, while I was waiting for parts, I made this entire sign out of rope LED and black acrylic. Uh, and I just soldered it all together and put a switch on the back. Like, back in season six, I think? Because I got inspired by the Hypershock sign. But we are not a Hypershock money team, so we have to DIY. So I think their neon sign, which is beautiful, and I think you can buy a copy of it, but it's like one to three thousand dollars, whereas this cost me like three hundred dollars in materials and just some soldering time. This cart, we took a piece of uh, butcher block material that Orion had just scrap and welded a frame onto it. When we left season seven, the weapon bars sitting on it in the moving van broke it like split it and when we parked it was just like this catastrophe of all of our stuff had, had collapsed in so it's no. back together now and we've welded a stringer on the bottom so that there's a a new frame it won't fall apart again even though it's like pretty thick wood uh the weapon bars are heavy they're very heavy 
And uh, yeah. How, how heavy is the hijinks weapon bar? Uh, between 67 and 71 pounds, depending on whether it's a stout bar or like the extra extra stout bar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, and this is also, this is great when we're in the pits because you can take your little jacket like, oh, it's time to go weld stuff. So I don't want my super flammable hijinks bomber jacket out in the welding area. Just zoop. Oh, there we go. It's like a Sailor Moon transformation. <laughs> uh, so I can't help but notice you have many different blades and they're all different sizes. We, yeah, we do. Do you care to run us through what each one does? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm gonna grab a glove real quick. So, item one, the long bar. So named because it is very long. How long is it, you might ask? Well, I like to do is say, I'm a gen per scale. That is longer than the tombstone blades. It is. This is specifically meant to be used against other horizontal spinners so that we hit them before they can hit us. It's literally there for reach. Uh, and this is tricky because robots like tombstone, they are very weapon forward. So is Triton. So they are kind of putting everything out front, uh, but they tend to leave some of their juicy bits exposed. So if you can get around the side, it goes. This is 48 inches. That's what she said. <laughs> oh man, if I, if I were a rock star, this is what my guitar would look like. <laughs> you are a rock star. Oh, thanks. Hey. So that's the long bar. Next up is the stout bar. <laughs> Which is shorter, but it's not lighter. Yeah. So back in season five, this was our like all-purpose go-to bar. You'll notice the long bar has lightening the holes, holes that make it lighter so we get more reach. So we're spreading the weight over a longer distance. This one has no lightening holes. It is solid, solid AR 500. And it's about one inch thick AR 500. Uh, but it turns out when you're fighting a vertical spinner, this is not enough. This is okay for like a lifter robot something that's not doing high kinetic energy in a, in a very specific direction. Well, we lost a whole weapon bar and nothing else in the fight with Uppercut because they hit it from the bottom and it, it bananaed oh, the God. whole thing. I cannot, this is used on tanks. This armor is used on military vehicles to protect them from gunfire and Uppercut just literally bent it. So we didn't get to finish our fight with Uppercut because we got yeeted out of the arena. But that, like, that would have been a heck of a thing. Nevertheless, after that happened, we were like, okay, we can keep the stout bar for some applications. So if we're fighting a lifter or a control bot, that's what this is for now. But we don't use this against vertical spinners. Mm -hmm. For vertical spinners, we have the extra stout bar. <laughs> oh, I do want to point out, you'll see, we've got the extra stout bar and we've got the foo bar. <laughs> This was a machining error that we just turned into like a benefit to us. So <laughs> now, I kid you not, uh, this was not supposed to be here. This is supposed to be just this nice clean chamfer all the way out, just like this one. But a tool started to pull out of the machine while this was being machined and the operator didn't know because he mm -hmm. had spent like many hours on this already. So he sent me a photo and said, what do you want to do? And I said, ah, just finish it and send it to us. We'll figure it out. So I added just a huge chunk of hard face here. And then by way of angle grinder, we made it back into the chamfer just at the edge, which is the only part that really matters. You can actually see the weld marks from the hard, hard facing right in here. Like it's still there. So basically hard facing, carve it into a sharp edge. And now, now this one weighs a little bit less because of that error. <laughs> so. The foo bar. The foo bar. Improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> like just make it work. Make it work. Want to cut humans so and robots. Extra stout, extra heavy. Oh yeah, this is 71 pounds of machine cut AR500. There is only one machine shop in the world that was willing to do this crazy design that is IMS in Sacramento. So if you need the machine some really cool weird stuff, IMS, they're the ones who will do it. Uh, we do have another machine sponsor, P3D. They make beautiful, wonderful aluminum parts for us in Florida. But if you want something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about features. Um, 
Because the stout bar had bent, we knew two things had to happen. One, we needed more thickness, but we also needed to get some of that thickness out because more thicker means more heavier, and there is in fact a weight limit. You must in fact stay under. So for our purposes, we designed in this big pocket that does not go all the way through, so it doesn't have the weakness that the lightning holes have where that becomes like a big stress riser. This is just a carved out area and it retains all of its strength because the other side is completely solid. And then the chamfered edge makes it cut into the other robot differently. So the long bar and the stout bar, if you can imagine, they have a, a raking angle on the hit. You're hitting from the side and it's kind of like being hit by a big war hammer, like a big blow. I'm trying to knock you away. I'm trying to smack you. This cuts in. The purpose of this is not to swat the enemy away, it's to bite into their armor as much as possible and rip as much of it off as possible. So the, when we run this, we kind of have to go with our ultra light armor configuration. So this is a more weapon forward than the other two configurations. But if you want to zoom in, I have repaired this weapon bar multiple times. It's been used in multiple fights, and every time we use it against any opponent, it just takes so much damage. And this is AR-500. This is hard. We got gouges all the way down. Yeah. Wow. Impressive. Most impressive. Hey there, Builder Blog! If you'd like to win your own tiny hijinks bar for your own tiny robot and some stickers, let us know in the comments what is your favorite fight of all time? Which two robots really made you think, like, yeah, I want to watch more of this? Like, look at what these do to each other. It's, it's impressive. Yes. Yeah. You could, you could take any one of these robots and just go through a car. Yes. We did that. We did that. Go. <laughs> Scorpios versus car. It's a video. Go watch that. <laughs> After you finish this video. Link down below. I love your shop. I, I love the use of wall space. Yeah, I love all your different oh, yeah. tails. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah, these are, these are tails from different seasons as well. And, oh, here, I'm going to get the ladder. This, so is, these, this is an ongoing joke in the battle. shop that people put things where I can't reach them. <laughs> Orion is very tall. Orion is very tall. He's not even the tallest one on the team. Now, it's Cameron. He's been beaten out by a guy who's like six foot seven? <laughs> Cameron is... <laughs> no wonder you guys build the tall, long robots. So... <laughs> <laughs> A 2020 tail. This is the OG design, and uh, it doesn't have. It's, it's missing. You can see that bar that goes through the the end. It had a floppy, uh, articulated wedgelet, which was like okay, but not that great. So we replaced it with a totally different style tail, which looks more like this. So this is the kind of tail we use on. Um, uh, that's our, like generic usage. That's our vertical spinner tail. You can see it has the the perforated rails down the side to help dissipate some of the energy from vertical spinners. And then it has a strong wedge bit, like a toe that is wider than the saw slots. Ah, that's very which important. Which is important. It's important that your forks and your wedges be wider than the saw slots. That's a pro tip from me. And then you can put little articulated wedgelets on the sides. So yeah, this is kind of an evolution of tails. And then this one, this one feels like 40 pounds. Let's look at the damage. This is what a horizontal tail looks like when it's been in a horizontal fight. Oh, wow. So, this is, this is some malice damage. And we can tell it's malice because we used a similar tail in a fight against Captain Shredderator. And what we found is that this area up here needed some reinforcement. So I reinforced it. I added some, like, just really quick, you know, gussets on the side and then what happened is like it's not enough this was also kind of a cold weld but you can see the material actually broke so the weld stayed intact and the material broke at the heat affected zone so that's like 
what are you gonna do? You're welding like outdoors on site. Yeah. But horizontal hits are really, they're, it's like getting hit by a freight train. So <laughs> you can see how many times this got hit before it began to fail. And that's the idea. With a shape like this, we want glancing blows over the end of the tail from the horizontals and not like one big, you know, hit from the side. So this totally did what it was supposed to do. It's just, that's a lot of damage. And to prevent it from coming apart, much like you may have seen like a piece of the tail come off from the saw blade swipe, this similar tail got these huge gussets on the bottom. It's this quarter inch AR400 steel welded in. But still like on this side, you can see like, look at the crack. Oh, wow. Just, it's just so much force. It's bananas. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a more personal level, I think for the most part, when it comes to build times, designing and building hijinks and running it, uh, there's, a, there's a strong push to stay positive, to stay optimistic. Uh, I think it's worth saying that every member of my team in the past couple of years, we have all had some big losses. Like we've had some heavy life things to deal with. And I, I can't believe how wonderful it, it really can be to start a new project with your friends and remember how important it is to think forward and look forward and believe that the future is going to be better than the past. I'm really, I'm really glad that we got some time off from last season because it was rough, but I'm even more happy that we have an opportunity to build new and to go back because seeing, seeing my team be re-energized and reinvigorated by what we can do and what we can build, it just fills my heart with joy. So, uh, you know, whether come what may, we're gonna build the best robot that we can. We're gonna come correct, and we're gonna we're gonna surprise you. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be what we wanted for season seven. We're going to achieve it. I have this feeling. Not really. But... Oh God. <laughs> You're inspiring, I Diana. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, I mixed my nerve. <laughs> In the name of the moon, I will punish you. Yes, that. <laughs> I think I've I actually have a video of Zach doing that from season four. <laughs> I'm fairly sure I've watched more Sailor Moon than you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> That's a weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we just found the end card. We <laughs> <laughs> Sailor Moon. All right. <laughs> Inspired by, but legally distinct from, Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God! Uh, if you know, you know. Okay. The prism crystal? Yeah. The little, the little yeah! Thing. Once again, continuing to land my Sailor Moon trivia. <laughs> again, weird flex, but good for you. <laughs>